Hello, beta testers. It's a fantastic time to be a Marvel fan with Future Evolution dropping, Guardians of the Galaxy coming, and now Marvel Midnight Suns. Yeah, I better call an ambulance and get that defibrillator ready, because Marvel fans are about to die and go to hell. You know, a lot of us miss that 90s era spiked leather jacket, uh, Spawn, taking itself super serial era of comics. You show us Blade, you show us Ghost Rider, what are we supposed to do? What, you, you, Doctor Strange, Wolverine, what, you want the money? You want, take the money, you know what I mean? If this game had Punisher and Moon Knight, maybe throw some, some Daredevil in there too? I might have broken my wrist and gone blind if you catch my meaning. In this game, apparently you're customizing a character that'll team up with Marvel heroes to fight Lilith, the mother of all demons? Come on, man. Even if it's a turn-based XCOM game that's not personally what most people are into, you have to admit, this story is exactly the kind of refreshing, comic book-inspired story that's a bold departure from the safe and hacky crap that we've seen lately. And these creatives deserve credit for at least trying to adapt it, even if it's just a jumping-off point. Because instead of selling us an Avengers game where you play as Thor for 10 minutes and spend hours on Kamala Khan, in this game, you'll start off as a resurrected child of Lilith. Inspired by the comic run known as The Rise of the Midnight Suns, where Lilith, the mother of all demons, was long ago defeated and had her remains locked away but regained power over time, Doctor Strange, realizing that she was regaining that power, has to stop her. He can't combat her directly because his magic would only help in opening the rift that she wanted to conquer through. But nine warriors, known as the Midnight Suns, are capable of stopping Lilith and her children, or Lilin. With a trailer set to Metallica and an incredible roster, this is a dream storyline for a game. Doctor Strange, Magic, Iron Man, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Blade, Captain America, Nico Minoru, and Captain Marvel have been shown so far. When you look at these MCU depictions of Killmonger, Loki, Daredevil, Punisher, Deadpool, and to a lesser extent Wolverine, it's insanely clear that anti-heroes just, they just have more fun. If this game captures the style and attitude of characters like Blade and Ghost Rider, it'll be a fan favorite instantly. Fire Axis, of course, makes the XCOM games, and to me, the beauty of those games is the demanding gameplay, where trial and error is typically where you're learning the majority of your lessons, like certain other games where they delight in you dying to teach your punk ass how things work. XCOM lends to replayability in this way by throwing so much at you that you can only guess what's the best way to handle certain situations in what's probably going to be your first disastrous playthrough. What I didn't like about XCOM was how devastating a permanent death could be because of the bullshit of a dice roll. I understand that, you know, it adds to stakes for every scenario, but with RNG being so wild that sometimes it felt like Jesus just took the wheel, quite frankly, you could ruin a playthrough and not even be able to win, at least in the first XCOM. Some people will be pleased to know that according to game designer Jake Solomon, there will be no permanent deaths in this game, and your highly customizable main character will have over 40 different superpowers available spanning from light side powers akin to your Captain America or your Tony Stark, or dark side abilities akin to Ghost Rider and Blade. On missions, you'll choose three companions to accompany you, and in between missions, at a hub known as the Abbey, the player can develop relationships with heroes and anti-heroes. Solomon says you can spar with players, some might want to play video games, and you can even play cards, apparently. You can give them gifts and join social clubs, and uh, this will affect your friendship or stance with them. I'm curious to see how this affects gameplay or what benefits may come from doing so, but if it's anything like Mass Effect 2 or something similar, I'm sure it'll bring out the best of them to have them buddy-buddy with you. 
If anybody's curious as to how I hypothesize this game may handle, I suggest you look up XCOM Chimera Squad, which to me may be a test run on how this game may handle. Designer Jake Solomon says the majority of XCOM's mechanics were thrown out the window in crafting this new experience, and on September 1st, we'll all be able to see just how this game handles with the gameplay reveal. As a Marvel fan, I can't help but be properly excited about this game's mere existence, even if it isn't everyone's cup of tea, because many people, myself included, might have thought Marvel games kinda in trouble after the disaster that was Crystal Dynamics Marvel's Avengers. A year after launch, and that game is still a buggy mess. It's asking $40 with $15 skins, $12 takedowns, a $10 battle pass for each individual hero, XP boosters you can pay for, paid emotes with no emote wheel so you can only use one emote at a time, Spider-Man exclusivity. Need I go on? And it'd be one thing if it worked, but after a year you have one location and your Marvel heroes struggle to look like Marvel heroes. So I applaud Fire Axis and faithfully representing Marvel. I praise Midnight Suns because this is what inspiration should look like. I applaud and congratulate the creatives involved with this project at the very least because they've crafted an enticing project for dweebs like me and have made something that, at a glance, I at the very least am interested in. I couldn't help but go back to Total Biscuit's uh, WTF is XCOM review and listen to him talk about how he was so addicted to the initial XCOM experience that he temporarily ignored his wife. That was eight years ago. Time flies. If Fire Axis can craft something similar to that XCOM experience, I hope that at the very least, even if it's not something that everybody wants to play, I think it'll be something popular enough for people to watch and enjoy other people playing. Can't wait to see more, and if this was informative, like the video for me, and if you're interested in more of this going forward, then subscribe. Did he just throw health back at me? What the fuck? Was he trying to like... <laughs> this is a peaceful gesture, I don't understand. <laughs> Are you pleased with what's been showcased so far? You think it's gonna be as sexy as Future Evolution's designs? I like what I see so far, but I'm eager to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. The only nitpick that I'd say that I have is that Doctor Strange looks really skinny in the trailer. I tried to highlight that earlier. Whereas, you know, he looking nice and, I don't want to say meaty, but proper, you know? It's a man we're talking about. Get them broad shoulders in there, you know what I'm saying? All right, what do I have to ask for that? Come on. Come on. Jiggle out, you know? Commence to jiggling. Hail Hydra.